Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Gosh, I just, I really do love this time of year. It's, it's setting up to be, I would say, as far as the fishing goes down here in the Keys, and I am super excited for the next four weeks of fishing down here. I absolutely love the month of December as far as the fishing goes. It can bring some of the best fishing that we'll see all year in the Florida Keys. It happens for a short period of time, and it's just awesome. It's, it just really is. So, But it's a little different fishery, and like I said, what was working last month won't work this month, or will work a couple days and then change, and it's just a, you really got to stay on top of it So as far as the weather patterns go. North wind and more north wind. Yellowtail fishing is going to change here within the next few weeks. That should happen. And what happens is the water says when the water temperature gets to a certain point, the yellowtail fishing will change, and you have to be really, really good to get them to bite. Really good. And that's going to happen pretty soon. You're, the fish are going to come up in your chum slick. They're not going to eat. They're going to frustrate the shit out of you. <laughs> and it's like, oh. So there's lots of tricks to get those fish to eat. Lots of tricks. So, But I'm not going to talk about that today. But that's going to happen very soon, very soon. And actually, I will give you one little tip here. When those fish, and I've talked about this in the past as far as those fish go, when they're not eating and the trick is with those, when they're in that wintertime mode is – shrimp works really well right now for those big yellowtails but like i said it's going to frustrate you because they're going to come up in a chum they're going to be really focused in on your chum and this time of year i do not like to use my soft chum i like to leave it at home because the metabolisms of these fish slow down and there's a, if you get a lot of people around you fishing and you start jumping oats and shit in there those fish fill up very 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 quickly so I've talked about this in the past. What I want you guys to do is I want you to switch your chum out. And if you're using like killer bait or any other type of shit, kind of knock that off and go to that, go to Manhattan green chum. And then if you have some yellowtails that are really, if you, when you encounter this stuff, you need to pull out the gizzards. Now for you guys who don't know what the gizzards are, it's, it's a nasty process and you have to get into the chum bag and you have to pull them out. They're little round, soft little gizzards we call them so uh maybe in the future i'll post up a picture and do a do a course on it and show you guys what exactly to look for but a lot of you guys know what it is but they're so you what you have to do is what i do is i will put a chum bag in at the dock and i will this i do this a lot in the spring when i start the yellowtail fish when they they start to spawn and the water's a little colder I'll put a fine mesh chum bag at my dock and I'll take a, a, a block of Menhaden green and I'll just let it go out of the dock and I'll then I'll sift through all the chunk and pull out the gizzards. So I can probably get about 10 to 15 gizzards out of one frozen block of chum. And then what I do is then I, I, I like to use pink jig heads in the wintertime or small black. Small, I prefer small black uh, circle hooks. Uh, number size threes and fours. I don't like to go any further. I don't like to go any. I'm sorry. I don't like to go any smaller. But the the small gizzard will really, really do a number on those finicky yellowtails that come up into your chum slip. So it it, it works like not. I mean, honestly, it works really well. I, it's like it's an old marathon. It's an old trick that I mean, the guys on the party boats on a marathon they. They sell the gizzards. They pull them out of the, the chum bags down a marathon, and then the mates sell these gizzards to the to the <laughs> to the uh, to the uh, the guys on the rail. So that's just something that's just been around down here in the Keys for for many years. And then I started showing it to some some of my clients, and there I'll get these emails from people. Oh man, we pulled the gizzards out of the chum bag, and we destroyed the yellowtails today. They wouldn't eat anything else, but. It's like anything else when the fish come up behind the chum and they're you can't get them to eat on anything. Well, they're eating. They're keyed in on your 
those fish are keyed in on your chum. And you'll be like, oh, man, I can't get those damn things to go. It's just a pain in the ass. And then you you start, like, cutting up everything. And some people start getting into the chum bag and trying to, like, put pieces of chum on the hook. But they're putting the wrong damn pieces on. you got to find the gizzard. Or they're using the wrong chum for the wintertime fishery. So, like I said, I really, like, I love using certain types and brands of chum. But in the wintertime, I have to, like, for this month of... Uh, this month, this month you can get away with it. But if you are using, like, get away with other brands. But in the month of January, when it gets cold, you better be using the Menhaden Green. And you better be ready to get dirty and pull those damn gizzards out of your chum bag. If that's what you because that's what you're going to catch your fish on. Okay. Uh, scale down to longer leaders, 15 pound of fluorocarbon leaders. Personally, my favorite leader right now is what i'm using i'm using the diamond fluorocarbon 15 pound and then i'll scale down to 12 pound if necessary but in the winter time you'll find that you're you really will have to go lighter to get the bites so it just it just depends on how the fish are eating it really does uh, like i said uh, also too you better have a really good fresh really good supply of fresh shrimp with you in the winter time when you're going out there to target yellowtails, that's what they're going to eat. You, you'll catch a few bonus mutton snappers, maybe some mangrove snappers. There's still some mangrove snappers uh, in the out there and in those out there along the reef, the larger ones. So you'll still catch a few of those. And like I said, on those gizzards, I've caught I've caught big mutton snappers in the winter time when I'm free lining them back. I'll even do it on the chum. I'll honestly I'll do that on the patries as well. I'll pull out some gizzards and I'll put them on the the hook and I'll have the kids cast them out and they'll catch fish on them. So it's just, it's a lot of fun to use them and people are like, Oh my God, we get to get the gizzards out. And so it's always kind of a thing on my boat with those. So especially when yellowtail fish, everybody will come back the next following year and say, Hey, you still using the gizzards or they'll get into the chum, the kids will and find the gizzards, put them on the hook. And <laughs> it's like, it's so much fun. I have to tell you, especially when you can, I like those damn things because I can catch, like like I said, three or four fish on one one gizzard. It's hard for those fish to get get them off the hook. So I even went as far as to like soak those gizzards in fish oil and put them in baggies, and they don't work once they've been frozen. They, they, I mean, once they once they're un, I'm sorry, once you freeze them with the chum and then you try to freeze them again, they don't work. For some reason, I don't know, but I've tried that too. I've tried to like, I've tried to recycle them into trips and shit. And like, I've done a lot of crazy stuff. But all I know is that those things work when nothing else will. That is your, if you want to re last resort or just go to it right away if you want to. So it's just, just another little bait that you can add to your yellowtail fishing. So, um, yeah, that's that's the yellowtail fishing for this. That's that's what we have to look forward to. Some really picky fish, but if you really want to enjoy some really good fishing right now, it's amazing as far as the yellowtail fishing goes. The next four weeks, like I said, the, are the biggest. You're going to catch some of the biggest flag yellowtails out there. It's it's basically the same type fishing as you experience in the spring, as the fish are in there in December. And they're there until it gets cold, and then they're gone. Like then, then, then they kind of disappear a little bit and disperse. But, anyways, now is the time to catch big flags between now and January first, because they are in there and they're in there thick, and they're a hell of a lot of fun to catch. Those big flag yellowtails, eighteen to twenty inch fish, are freaking fun to catch, man, on light tackle. So, but that's all I got on yellowtail, and the, I hope you guys picked up a couple little tips on wintertime yellowtail fishing. Uh, before I wrap it up here today, I want to give a shout out to Kevin. Kevin's part of the rigging group, uh, the rigging crew actually, and the rigging crew meets once a month, and we I pick a topic as far as lure making goes and other stuff we talk about in there as well. Now, the cost for the rigging crew is forty nine dollars a month, and that does not include supplies. So what what happens is I pick a I pick a rig once a month and then I send out a list of supplies that the that the guys need to purchase and then we meet once a month through Zoom and then we have a a private Facebook group 
So that's the Good Karma Rigging Crew, and that's a paid group. So uh, that is so the guys that pay for that group have access to that group as well, and that's just a place that we have where I post other stuff as well. So, but anyways, that's the Rigging Crew. Again, uh, shout out to Kevin Mann for catching a uh, big wahoo on a on a on a wahoo lure that he learned how to tie in the in the rigging crew. So we share a lot of stuff in there as far as I share a lot of things and tricks and tips and the other guys share stuff that you're not gonna find on YouTube and I think that's what's it's just really cool. So but I'm a good group to be involved in. If, if you're interested, like I said, I, I take a very limited amount of people and I do have one spot left that I can fill. So if you're interested, you can email me at goodkarmaryan at gmail.com. And then once that spot's filled, it's filled until um, you know until f- further notice. So uh, that's it. That's all I got for today, guys. I got to wrap it up. Uh, a lot to do. So make sure that you guys follow me on Instagram. It's My Instagram account is goodkarmasportfishing underscore fl underscore keys. And then you can check out my website, goodkarmasportfishing.com from time to time. And then the, download the Good Karma Sport Fishing app, okay? A lot of stuff is going to be happening with the app over here over the next few months. So make sure you guys download that. And I have fishing reports on there. Has I, I try to do those at least two to three times a week when I am out. It's tough to do when it's blowing. <laughs> so... Um, Trying to think of what else. Oh, and um, get involved with the Good Karma um, Sport Fishing Podcast private Facebook group. Uh, that's uh, you can. What you do is just do a search for the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast, and then it's like I said, it's a private group. And then I can I'll go through your information. If things look good, then I'll approve you into the group. That's all I got, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. <laughs>